In this episode, we'll be talking about the new Streets of Rage 4 announcement and the series as a whole, starting with Streets of Rage 1, continuing to 2, and finally 3, and what we thought about replaying these games so many years later. All this and more on Nerdcaster coming up. To it we heard the announcement about uh streets of rage 4 coming out so Lori and i decided to go through and play the original streets of rage games from beginning to end or try you know close to the end as we could get at least with three um we didn't do so well on one either we did okay on one well let's start with one since it's the first game in the series um I like this game. I think it's the best game out of the series, even though we weren't able to complete it this time through. I have beaten this game before, but my old age and reflexes and timing apparently aren't there yet. I also haven't played this game in like a decade. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I can't beat it again. I think the last time we played this game, um, and we we to jump through hoops to even get these games, to go dig out our PS3 out of the closet to get the uh, what is this? Like Sonic Ultimate thing. Classics or something yeah. like that out of there to just to even play it. But even before then. I think we played it on the Wii Virtual Console, um, was... of course, before that, um, these games were on Sega. Um, probably, you know, among the top tier, like, Sega royalty, in my opinion. Yeah, these were, other than, like, Sonic the Hedgehog, these are the only other games I really, the Sonic the Hedgehog series, sorry, cause there's many games in that shit. But th- this was, like, the game that made me want to play Sega. Um... But even with the technical difficulties, we had a little bit of a problem getting uh, getting even to play it. Um, we actually played two first, then one, and then... Or two, three, and then one. Yeah. I, I don't know why we went out of order. I think it's because you really like two and one. Two is definitely this. my... If we have to rank them, then um, two is definitely my favorite. Um, it has. I played that game um, when I was a kid often. Um I also had a Sega. Joe, you didn't have a Sega as a kid, did you? No, but the kid living three doors down from me did. So every day it was either I went to his house to play Sega or he came to mine to play Nintendo because I had the other console. So it, it, it was like I had a Sega, but I guess maybe I couldn't play 10 hours a day. I could only play six. You had Sega at your other house. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Exactly. It's exactly how it was. Um but Street, Streets of Rage was, like, one of our favorite games growing up. A, it, it, let, let's go through a little bit of, of the games. They're co-op. And for that time... Um, it was the era of co-op games. Yeah. So this was, like, awesome. You you had this. You had Ninja Turtles and all those other co-op games. But this side-scroller beat-em-up is probably one of, if not the best, in all co-op games to date. I mean, what other ones can you think of that were just as good? just as good um to me i'm it's my favorite um out of all of them so i don't think there are any that really compare um to this one uh which brings me to we played uh mighty morphin power rangers the movie co-op game on terrible i loved that game as a kid and then playing it again and i haven't played this game for 20 years that game sucks yeah that game game was horrible it was a horrible co-op game was so boring so repetitive so that definitely doesn't compare at all. Um, and even in recent years, I feel like there aren't that many. I mean, there are multiplayer games. You have MMOs now, and it's a completely different landscape. But I would love for a um, for an awesome co-op game to come out that's, that's very um, similar. Right. You have two characters on the same screen. You know, you, you don't play have to... locally, yes. or you can play remote as long as they're on the same screen. I mean, they, they you, you're on the same screen when you're playing those battle games like Injustice and everything else. Why haven't they done this yet? Well, I mean, I'm not saying maybe they have, and I just don't know any of these new corn fangled games that came out for PS4 or PC that are side scrollers, but I don't know of any. And if that's the case, whatever, I don't care. This this this, this Streets of Rage 4 is going to be it. I'm I I mean, I hope so. I've, 
it's got high this is the way i feel with a lot of either remakes or sequels to really you know retro games it's just very hard to do because technology is just different and people's expectations of games are just different i mean we're not going to dive into um four and our predictions for that just yet just because we're gonna we're gonna kind of go through um the streets Indivi- of yeah, rage. The streets of rage. Oh my god. So <laughs> you know what? Speaking of that, um in Streets of Rage One, just that whole intro um about, you know, basically this situation around why you're going around beating the shit out of like different punks on the street is just you have three ex cops, which I'm actually confused. So they call them ex cops, but then the police force comes to back them up. It, it, are they like cops? Well, well, yeah, but they say that they're they keep saying that they're ex cops, but then also in the intro they say that they three young like police officers are basically taken to the streets so it's like are they still cops or are they not cops because if they're still cops they shouldn't be beating the shit out of random people that's just not allowed and if they are not cops why do they have backup with these crazy like rocket launchers and machine guns to mow down you know enemies yeah yeah i just don't you know so but whatever i guess it's really hard to kind of come up with a storyline that's going to make sense so whatever the second thing I actually want to point out was um, how old these people are. So you have like a 21, a 22, and a 23-year-old. Yeah. I don't know. Were, was Who's was the, the world different in the 90s? When, well, 91 when this came out. That you have a 21, 22, and 23-year-old. Like they just got their shit together so much. They just go around and they're going to clean up the city. I have a theory about that. But who's the youngest? Um, I think it's Blaze. So Blaze ca- Fielding. So you have Adam Hunter, Blaze Fielding, Axel Stone. Yeah. So I, my theory is on that is usually people who are playing video games are like preteen teenagers, right? Yeah. So you're taking these characters. They're making them a little older. It's like, look how badass these people are. Ten years from now, eight years from now, I'm going to be that badass eight years from now. I think that's what it is because they know right now at their age they ain't badass and there is no badass people like that. So they gotta they gotta make them a little more into the future, a little more older than the the the, the genre of people. What is it? The, the their the people that play those games. What's that called? You use this word all the time to me. Like their audience. Uh huh. Their audience is like it's young. It's just a young okay. Whatever. Yeah. Demographic. That's it. Demographic. They're they're placating to the demographic to show them what in five years maybe they could be that badass or whatever. That to- you know what that definitely makes sense to me. Just now I look at it as like a thirty year old person and I'm like, no twenty one is- year old motherfucker. No, I'm just like that. they're all okay. They're not all losers, but generally like I don't know a twenty one year old that really has their shit together unless they really fell on some hard times and they had to grow up really fast. Which you know I guess the case can be made for these people. So. I don't know. Maybe all in all, it's it's not that also, unrealistic. Where do these people live? Streets well, of Rage. I get that, but like, th- what's the name of the city? Do they even say the name of oh. the city? I don't know. It's not even important. But y- people just walk around knifing people at random. Well, this the the, the syndicate that's th- that created this whole problem. The, the crime took you know. They took to the streets and everything was violent. Nobody is safe. Is literally like all this shit that's coming in the uh, the opening scene. Yeah, but other than you, your character that you're playing, and the cops that show up to save you, there I don't see anybody else in the background who's nice. I don't see any other good guys in the background. No NPCs that are. Yeah, no, they all fucking attack you. So what is the entire city in the syndicate? Or at least a majority, a significant majority. And what about those punks that are kind of like, oh, I'm just getting sent out, I'm just doing my job. Like, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, hey, punk number five, uh, go out there and fight those people that are literally killing everybody else on our team. Yeah, I'm just going to go do that. Yeah. And that brings up another point. In the first game, they don't have names of the characters like they do in two and three. Like in two and three, you get Donovan, you get uh, Abadidi. How many variations of the same the same name that yeah. you can give? Y, y signal, B signal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, in the first one, there's no energy bars on the enemies. That annoyed uh, me. A unless you bit. get to the the boss battles, and there's the, they, they they don't have names obviously because that's usually what's over their energy bar. Um, and the fact that the red energy bar is a good thing for the heroes. Red usually means bad in video games. But you had trouble with that in the beginning. I did because, well, we shouldn't have played two before we played one because that got me in the thing, you know, because you have a yellow energy bar and it, when it, as, you know, gradually when it turns red, you're dying. 
in this case, it, when it turns white, you're you're almost dead. So it, it kind of confused me a little bit. I ate an extra apple. I'm like, I need this. And he's like, all right. All right. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's the one who's almost dead, and I'm fine. <laughs> so in, in, in Streets of Rage 1, we ended up making it as far. And again, these are side scrolling beat em up games. Nothing that nobody out there has never seen or played if you played a retro style game. And this is on normal difficulty. This is just a regular game, not extra hard. We're not, you know, expert gamers here, just, you know, your casual gamer. And we get all the way to the eighth stage, which, in my opinion, not playing in 10 years or whatever it is that we haven't played, it's, it's commendable with having to relearn all this crap. And the control suck. Just. And I, like I've always said, games back in the day were a lot harder than games today. Just my opinion. Uh,. And then when we get to the eighth stage, we have to fight all those boss battles all over again. But this time, we don't get to use the police for backup, which is insane to me. The police can drive on a boat in, like, stage six and shoot off all their crap, their machine guns and their, their grenade launchers and shit from a boat that they just drove on. But they can't shoot through they a They drove window. on the deck, by the way. Yeah. So this is like, where did the car come from? <laughs> and the boat's moving. It's not like we're docked. The background scrolls. So the boat is moving, unless the city moves, which not true. But so they can't shoot this thing through a window in a hotel or whatever stage eight is supposed to be. I mean, there's windows. Or even in uh, stage seven when you're on, on that the elevator. elevator. It's just like the, I mean, those missiles must be heat seeking or something because they completely they, go like a 90 degree turn yeah. to go up where it has to go, which is completely ridiculous. But um, yeah. Maybe maybe it's not because they couldn't get a car in a building. Maybe it's because like the syndicate in the, the final stage is like so saturated. That they, a police, they can't, they can't run even them over? It, well they can't <laughs> even they can't even gain entrance or or maybe it's that I have no so idea. So you're saying they can't even get close enough to the window? To, maybe to the that would be the only viable explanation. There would be it would be nice if we had a reason why we didn't if they gave us a quick side note on why we don't have specials in the last stage at some point because i'm sitting there fucking mashing a mm -hmm. wondering why i'm not getting back up and abadidi number seven is <laughs> is wrecking me you know what aggravates me about the the final stage is also those flying um serving trays carts that come flying at you so first of all i understand like you have to have some kind of environmental uh you know like, damage that's yeah. gonna happen if you're not you know you have if you have no game sense but can you could I think they could have chosen something a little bit different than like a cart that might might have gotten shoved a little too hard by a hotel clerk. That takes half your life. That takes half your <laughs> life away. I'm like that's a little. I'm gonna like, find. Oh, I my toe. I'm oh, gonna no. find the bellhop or the waiter or whoever it is and beat the shit out of them. I don't care. I'm I'm pretty sure it wasn't the bellhop or waiter that did that. I'm pretty sure one of them syndicate baddies just decided to throw it at you to try and stop you. See, in my own in um in game canon in my own head. Yeah. It's a waiter. It's just a waiter at a hotel. It's just like, I'm, I'm going to be part of everything. I think that's also why I think it's a hotel, too. Because <laughs> it's like those serving trays that you do for room service. Yeah, definitely. That's what, I mean, I never thought it was not a hotel. Yeah, I know, but I'm like sitting here thinking about like I'm calling And that hotel, gross looking carpet on the bottom. Like that's yeah. definitely a 90s hotel right there. Like they probably thought they were the Waldorf. How do, how do you not know that's like not Mr. X's office building and he's just sitting on the top floor like in two? Like, that's what I thought it was at first. But then I'm, like, sitting here calling a hotel. I'm like, why? What makes me think this is a hotel and not an office building? And that, when you said those cards, is what, why I, I guess I come to that conclusion. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, back to difficulty. Uh, this, I don't think, I didn't, the game didn't feel very hard. It got very repetitive. Some of the boss battles, though, are a little bit ridiculous because they move a lot faster than you do. And granted. They're hitboxes. Like, they, they're able to hit you from, like, halfway across the screen most of them. Yeah. Versus, like, you have to get in close and try to peg them. And, I mean, the, the case can be made like old school games, just wait it out and then counter when they stop. There's not enough time in this game for most of these bad guys to do that. you got to be in the right place to be able to rush in and get them. Because Axel, who I was playing as, is just way too slow. To run across the screen and, and grab her punch. It just doesn't work. Yeah, well, Blaze is supposed to be fast, so there's not a lot of power, but um, I even had a little bit of trouble. And again, just like playing this game once after 10 years, not like we're playing this game over and over and over again to learn the pattern and everything is not, you know, fuck that. I'm not playing this we game for seven hours. We legit really played to, to. Just to get through it and, you know, 
and, and for the show. Yeah. It gave us a good topic to talk about, and because I'm kind of hyped about four. But difficulty-wise, I felt this game gets hard at a certain point. It gets hard at, like, to me, it gets a little bit crazy, because now enemies start to swarm you, there's just more of them, and there's more environmental damage in, like, stage six. Like, yeah, the I end was... of stage six into seven. Uh, oh, no, six is the uh, the, the conveyor belt and the smashy yeah, thing. It's a little bit before that. It's more like no. stage later stage four. I thought it gets hard. Five, six, seven, and eight. The first two stages I feel are just really easy. Yeah, they're really easy. Especially if you save your little backup weapon for the boss battles, it it, it takes more than half their life away, and you got to only get like two hits on them, and boom, they're dead. At that point, though, like after just saving them for the boss battles. I kind of felt like using them was really cheap, so I'm glad they got rid of that special for two. Well, that's that, that special is a little cheap. Um, the one thing that I felt was cheap about this game is when you're getting hit by an enemy, getting out of it is insanely hard. You don't have, like, in two where you can hit A and just do your, like, combo move and it'll break you out. You'll lose a little bit of health, maybe not as much as they would be inflicting on you. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this game, when they're pounding on you, it's like damn near impossible. You just got to mash the button faster than, I guess, whatever the game is expecting to break out of it. And by that time, I'm kind of already taking like four or five hits. It it's kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, but I, those jugglers, those are the ones, the like regular, normal enemies, the flame juggler guys or the one who's juggling axes that, that was really annoying to me yeah um and so if i got swarmed by them like fuck that special move i'm not dealing with this i, I did figure out how to kind of you uh, hit him from behind yeah no, well not from behind if you just have to punch him don't try to get him to grab him just keep him at arm's length and you can punch them out of their hand but if they run towards you you're gonna he's always take, running towards exactly. you with this little like crazy juggly dance that he's doing <laughs> But I did figure that out way late in, in the last time we played. Um, but yeah, I feel like this game starts off very easy. Gets And it doesn't go from like easy to medium to hard. It goes from easy to like, oh my fucking God. Like, shit just got crazy. No, I don't think it goes like that. I That's just think it I goes... It, it definitely... Listen, uh, I don't think anything's like... We'll get into, oh my God, that's really fucking hard a little later. But it definitely... It's a lot harder it, than two. It, 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 it's it's noticeably harder than two was. Okay, that's a better way of saying it. But you get to stage eight and you have to fight all these boss battles over again. Which, if with, you use your cheap special move, then you didn't really learn their pattern. So you get screwed. <laughs> the game screws you in the end anyway. Um, so uh, to me, this is a game. If if you're ever going to play it, if you've never played it before, then there's something wrong. With you go out and play it now. But it's low investment, taking an hour to beat the game. Yeah, most game run-throughs for the, for this this time frame were about an hour. Uh, but it's one of those games where you can't just beat it on your first run-through. You're going to have to die. You're going to have to start from the beginning, and you're going to have to play it through again. And it, it's one of those repetitive games. But that's what I think made these games harder than games today. You can't just save somewhere and boom, go. You get your three continues, and then it's game over. Start all over again. And try to get back to the end of the game. The end. Yeah. So we can't comment too much on the ending of this game because we didn't. I mean, I've it's been so long since I've even seen it, and we didn't see it the first playthrough that we had. That's so that's why they make Google. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the ending wasn't even like it's Earth whatever. Shattering. Yeah. Just like, oh, Mr. X took him down. I, I'm gonna just assume that that's what happened. Um. But so I mean, so one definitely not a bad game, and I I, I know it got. You know, it had to have gotten decent critical acclaim to have a sequel made. I mean, um, although I don't think in back in those days it really took much. Just that, um, I mean, they were able to recycle a lot of um, the music from one, which was amazing, by the way, into two. Which the music th- in all three of these games is amazing. It's one of the best parts. The, the music itself is like a character in these games. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the music that came into 2 I thought 2 had the best 2 is my favorite for a lot of reasons I thought it had the best music even though there's a lot of you know recurring you know music themes from 1 into 2 I thought they just kind of remastered and perfected them yeah they were a little updated um but you know now on 2 thoughts on 2 2 2's beginning is like you took down Mr. X and now Axel or not Axel Adam has been kidnapped or taken and now you're trying you got his kid brother skate um, and then you have uh, one of Axel's friends, Max Thunder, 
um, which inventive name, guys. Great job. Uh, <laughs> it's also a ripoff off of the, the Final Fight or, or some other game with some, some guy named Hagar. They, they pretty much could be the same dude. I mean, I don't remember the name of that other game off the top of my head, but go look it up. And and uh, yeah, you just have Skate and him in this one, right? They skate added... and him, and then and then so you have four characters. Yeah. And what little brother? How old is this kid? He's on roller skates. By the way, the backwards worst... cap roller yeah. skates. He's like ten. He's like ten. What ten year old is going out to fight crime? It's like I'm gonna save my big bro. It's like, no, kid, you're going to get stabbed by one of these stabby dudes with a knife. Yeah, where's this kid's mom? Yeah. Like, unless Adam was the only dude taking care of him, it's just like, uh, the only way I was able to eat, he's kind of kidnapped now, so I feel like I got to come with you all so that, um, A, I could either feed, or no, he'll eat those apples and turkeys on the way, and that's how he's going to eat. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, first of all, I can't stand playing as that character. I think he's the worst one in, in any game. He's super fast, though. So if you, it, he's good in certain situations. So like if if you're um like you know with like those 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 fat those big ass fat guys that blow fire that blow fire you know he's really easy to get behind them or to if you're trying to outmaneuver and to stun, great. But uh, it'll take you thirty years to do it because there's like, no we, power. Yeah. yeah. But same thing could be said for Blaze. She doesn't have a lot of power either. She's kind of like evened out. She's got like two stars on the board with everything. So she's pretty even. She's pretty. She's the most even character, yeah. I think. While Axel in the first one has more power, um, in the second, obviously, it, it's Max Thunderstone or, or Max Headroom or whatever his name Max is. Thunder. Max Thunderstone. Whatever. He, he obviously has the most power, so now Axel and Blaze are like the two um, evened out ones with Axel having a little bit more power while Blaze has a little bit more speed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you're there, all all four of you. You're gonna save Skate's brother, um, and you're gonna go through these levels. So again, I think better music. The game's a little easier so, on normal setting. On the normal setting, I'll, I'll wait. Well, let's just continue because I have to say something about the ending of this game when we get to that. Um, this game we did. Yeah. The, <laughs> again, it, it's probably the easiest out of the three, um, and it also introduced the very easy setting and the mania setting. You have to you know, put in a special code for it, but mania uh, on this game is ridiculous. It's like god mode in some games nowadays. I think when, back this game we haven't you know um, this game we did play um, frequently when it was on virtual console, and yeah. I remember. Um, on Mania, I think we only made it to stage four, and all our continue. And this is putting in the cheat code. Stage four, all continues use nine lives because with the with the code you can you can do Mania and you can get all nine lives there. Yeah. The, the other thing though that this game had that one day, you could still at least go up to five lives in options in two and three. You can't do that in one. That's right. So mm -hmm. while you can put in the code to get nine lives, which we didn't do by the way. You know what? Now that you actually, now that you said that, because we did use five lives in two, if we got the option for five lives in one, we probably would have just beat the game pretty easily. Um, because that's, I I, that's six more, that's one, two, yeah, six more lives that you just kind of were given. That, yeah. that would have got it, us through the end of the stage. It's pretty much eight. a whole nother continuum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it, it's whatever. I, I, two, I really like. I think two to me has the, the best control feeling. Like with the way you can control in the hitboxes and everything works. I think two was on point with that because I again I do have a problem with that in three, um, and obviously in one. Um, two to me is is a lot of fun. If I like one better, I like one better because I do like the I actually like stage eight a lot of one. That, that's probably my favorite stage in all of them. Um, I like the hotel cart thing. I like the fact we got to battle everybody all over again. To Which, me, that makes the game, it's like, you're going up against the big boss, you better be able to take off his little minion boss. They do that in stage 8 and 2 also, though. It's just you're on a, a you're on your own little elevator where you're facing off with every boss that you ever come across, too. It just, the, I will say, uh, depending on the difficulty level, though, like they're not, they don't have as much health as they did when you faced off with them at the end, which I don't know if one did either, because we couldn't tell. Yeah. There's no health bar. True, um, on non-bosses. Yeah, and since they weren't a boss at that point, yeah, they had no health bar. Um, I think stage, uh, or I think two had the, their uh, level design was. I mean, it looks a lot better. It's obviously, it's it's a new it's all game. Cleaned up, yeah. Do baseball. They also put posters in this one. You can actually read whether <laughs> they make four. whether they make sense or not. It's a different story. 
Uh, one of them said Sega, but it was S E on the top line and like G A on the bottom line or something like that. It's, it's design choice. Yeah, it, yeah, I'm sure it was. I I really big fan of all the stages in two, except for the two stages I really don't like in two is stage five, the boat. I don't like, and it's just because I didn't like it, just seemed a little boring to me. Um, and stage seven, just the, and I hate stage uh, six in Streets of Rage 1 for the same reason. I just hate the conveyor belt. It just annoys me. Yeah, it's a pain. It's a pain in the ass, definitely. I hate in 2. The one I hate the most is the baseball field. Or the baseball stadium. Really? I love that. I love that level. I hate that part. I hate fighting the ultimate warrior there. I, I don't understand why this wrestling dude is in the middle of a baseball field. It's the same dude as the wrestling dudes in 1. One, I agree. but And there's only one of them. In 1... They weren't on a baseball field. Like, what is this wrestling dude doing on the baseball field? Can they put a, him in a ring? Well, it's. It would well, make more sense if we were in like a was, boxing arena. He wasn't in a baseball field, though. Like, it's a baseball field. You like descended into like the an underground. No, you do that after you fight him. The, the the pitcher's mound goes down, and you're on like the pitcher's mound. You're on the pitcher's mound. You go all the way down. You don't go all the way back up. Then you're on the you underground. You fight him before you go down. No, you don't. Yes, you do. You fight him on the baseball field. You, I'm you are, you. you are. I'll, I'll bet you ten thousand dollars. I'll bet you ten thousand dollars. No, he's he's completely, completely wrong. Uh, you fight the, um, the, the for the first time. I think you fight the, the, the fat guys that blow fire on the baseball field, and then you descend. You fight a whole bunch of people on the way down, and then you're like in this underground kind of club or fighting arena like UFC style and uh, he's pulling open an image right now does that fucking look like a baseball field to you yes it does no it doesn't it's a baseball field. no it's not it's definitely a baseball field. it's definitely not a it baseball field. he's standing on the infield the in infield first of all the no 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 where's the outfield where's the hell where the hell is the outfield those are people and they're caged like you're in a ring. You're in a ring. You're in some kind of fighting ring. No. Yes. Where do I remember this baseball field from? Then? Because it's before this part of the stage. All right. He's still he's still trying to like there make it is. up. No. See. Yeah. You go. You go on the the pitcher's mound. It descends. All right. You you right. You right. That's ten thousand dollars for me. Yeah. 10, I don't know where you're gonna get it, but <laughs> from your bank account. It's <laughs> it's mine. It's mine whenever I want it. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, I don't even, oh, so level design. I I actually really enjoyed stage four. Why does the pitcher's mound even become an elevator? That's because it's controlled by the syndicate. So what if they just decide like, hey, put a robot pitcher in now? Like. What's the point in this? Like, I, what's I the know. point in secret like rooms being opened by a bookshelf? Uh, for secrets. Yeah, so secret, you know, it's like in the middle of a baseball under, stadium, underground fighting. So nobody would think to look there. But who is allowed to? Oh go my god, I'm not. I'm not. You know what? Why don't you write the original creators <laughs> of this game? And be like, why the hell did you fucking do this? Because it doesn't fucking make sense. It doesn't make sense. The game is still awesome though, but it is a little bit unbelievable. Um, So fast forward into the end of the game. Okay. You face off with Mr. X and and Shiva, Shiva, which I think Shiva is probably the best mini boss um, out of all the games. Um, I found him quite easier than I remember, though. Well, we also played, again, this game is a little bit easier on, um, you know, because we also played this game on hard and very hard and when we attempted mania and on very hard um i know that i lost my continues before i even got up there but you made it there you died when we played him and mania of course like i said we only made it to stage four but um no on a normal setting he's, he's pretty easy to dispatch especially if you have two people yeah it, it was not that hard at all and i'm like sitting there i'm like this dude's gonna kick my ass and i'm like i kicked his ass well i think i just think he looks badass no, I do think he's one of the best characters, which we'll talk more about him in, in the next installment. Um, but so you fight him, we fight Mr. X, who again... He's a machine gun. Uh, yeah. Signature. You get, you get plugged with bullets and still get up and fight him. I don't know. I get, I get shot by six or seven bullets. I'm definitely not getting back up. Well, Blaze is wearing like a tube top, but that's yeah. like fine. So you take him down. Again, on normal, this is not a, a difficult game on normal. Anybody... 
if you want to have a, just a good time. Play it on normal. I'm pretty sure you'll do well. Uh, you beat the game. Yay! And now we get to save Adam, who's in bondage in some back room. He's legit. Like, what did they do? He's chained up. He's chained to a wall. Like, there's no little jail. They, they can make a baseball field with an elevator shaft. They can't put him in a little jail cell. He's got to be chained to a wall. Oh, it's got to be. Well, it's got to be dramatic. He's not like Max Thunderdome or Abadidi, where he's gonna break through these chains. He's Adam. That's true. They seem like pretty normal, like restraints. Like he <laughs> would, you know, if he's if he could, uh, if he could beat the shit out of a hundred guys, like I'm pretty sure, you know, that shit ain't gonna stop him. So it, it's it's whatever. It just looks terrible, and but yay, skates reunited. And the bad graphic of, what is it, the sunset at the end or some yeah. crap? Here's another thing, too. Where he looks like a rabbit. No, he doesn't look like a rabbit. He so, like, like so this is another thing, too. Like, so you, so you have Adam skates on his shoulders, and they're all looking up. And then you're, like, kind of wonder, what the hell are they looking at? And then it cuts <laughs> to, like, true. another credit scene, and then y you get another image. And it's then you see, um, you know, Blaze and Axel and Max waving goodbye. Adam has, again, his brother on his shoulders, who has both his arms in the air. That's why he looks like a rabbit. I mean, yeah. it's it's pixel art. But And then there's a helicopter above the both of them. So I can only assume that they were just looking at the helicopter in the scene right before that. But it's just like, why? Who's in there? Who? Yeah, exactly. Who the hell were is in like, there? Hey, Mr. X, we don't like you getting a helicopter and leave our city. Like, is that how nice they are? You chained up our good friend, but bye. Like, who? I don't know. Whatever. Who knows? But um, now, okay, so now let, let's go right into Streets of Rage 3. Now, Adam is not in this game either. But um, so you have Blaze writes Axel a letter basically saying <laughs> that the chief of police is missing. And there's all this other shit that went down. There's bombs and, and, and lookalike robots and... Dr. Zan, a new character, is she's working with him, and please come help, and blah, blah, blah. Um, Dr. Zan, who is a robot. Who's himself. like an old man robot. Old man cyborg, Dr. Zan. Um, who, 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 who skates around with his little jetpacks on the bottom of his feet to go to move around at times when you're trying to run. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I just don't... Here's So here's my thing. Like, I don't get, like... Okay, so you're making, like, a cyborg doctor-type character... Yeah. And he's just like a balding old man. Like I don't know. I feel like you, you couldn't make this dude look a little bit more badass. He's supposed badass. to be like a scientist dude, and whenever you see scientists, they always look like old dudes. I guess I don't know. I just like look at Einstein. Were they trying to channel like Dr. Wiley? Like I don't know, like what the hell they're trying no, to I do here. I think more like Dr. Einstein and stuff, like from back in the day or Edison. No, nah. like, most of the images you see of them, they're old with white hair. Nah. It's like all scientists are old people. Apparently, he's like an old man. He sounds like a pirate. And I don't, I don't know. He's like Lucius Fox. <laughs> I am, um, I, I don't know. But, but here's, an, okay, so back to like the characters. So is Adam is, actor? Adam isn't in this game, but they bring back Skate. Literally, they bring back the worst character from the second one. So like if you had to pick, the like Max, Max is gone and, but you get Skate. Like, <laughs> so right off the bat playing Future Rage 3, the first, I remember the first time we had gotten it. I remember thinking, well, at least Blaze is there because I'm a girl, and of course, I'm that's the character I'm going to pick. But I also feel like I'm like I don't have much of a choice because Doctor Z that seems like a stupid fucking character, and Skate again, like that's who we get. Well, not Axel's happy. still there. Well, I, well, you get Axel too. The, the, but if you're playing the co-op, you're definitely character. not getting that character. No, because everybody wants to be Axel. Mm -hmm. um, but even so, so. Um, before we get into the gameplay, so just even more about the story. So as you progress some of your levels, you, um, you know, doctors, they're like, oh, Dr. Zan was right about this bomb. And then Axe is like, I'm still really suspicious of you. And then this doctor guy's like, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Like, that's so unrealistic. Like, who wrote this game? Like, this game got, um, this game already got a lot of shit, even, you know, I'm not even the first person to even be saying these things, but because this game got shit on pretty bad. Uh, but the cutscenes in between this, the stages, I thought was a really nice ad. But the writing in it was pretty bad, and they changed it from the North America, the, the Japanese version, the North American version. They censored what the story was because they didn't want, because um, it was originally like the president was missing and the Secret Service there problems there, and then they changed it in North America to the Chief of Police. And uh, in the American version, I believe there's 
Isn't there a missing boss battle in this game too? One of the bosses got you because he was like super. Um, it was like super homosexual, and um, it, he was a blatantly homosexual villain. And of course, North America just can't have that, so they cut him from the game. Yeah. Um, which you know, whatever. It's the '90s, and the North America can't seem to do anything right when it comes to Japanese ports. But um, so yeah, from there's a there, lot of changes. There's a lot of differences between the Japanese version and the American version. One of which is the difficulty level. This game, I, I, I couldn't remember. I didn't remember this game being this hard when I was younger. Maybe it was because my reflexes were better. But this game felt impossible to Yeah, this beat. is downright crazy. I used to continue in stage one. It's just like, how the hell does that even fucking happen? Well, in in real, reality, the stages in this game is also longer, in my opinion, than the other two games. There's like three different scenes in the first stage as opposed to like one or two, which there were two, st- I think, two scene changes in stage one and two. And then on- there's only one scene in stage in, in Streets of Rage one. But this Something one, like that, you yeah. had like three and they were they were difficult. The enemies, they move super fast and two punches, you're half your life's gone. Like you have to be really careful. You can't get hit. Just you, don't you get just hit. Can't. And yeah. this is on normal difficulty, by the way. I just want to reiterate that we, we played all these on normal difficulty. And this is ridiculous. Um, and you even looked up, like, what are we doing wrong? There's got to be something wrong here. Yeah, and I ended up on, uh, of course, I end up on GameFAQs. Great. I used to visit that website all the time. I, I, I really hope that that's still being maintained. So I pull up a thread that's nine years old. Yeah. And, of course, somebody mentions, it's just like, why do I feel like I'm getting my ass completely handed to me in this game? And, of course, I read through the comments. This is before I discovered that the um, the difficulty level was changed in the North American version of this game. Um, to They doubled the, they nearly, I think, doubled the speed of the enemies, and they made them hit you so much harder than in the Japanese version. So it became so much more difficult. Almost, and, and, and the thing is, you have to play a normal difficulty, because if you play on easy then you, you don't get the ending of the game. You only get five stages. You can't even progress to the end of the game. Yeah, you play on easy and you get an ending. But it's not the true ending. You have to play on a harder difficulty. It's not even an ending. It's just like, here, this game is kind of over now, but there's no resolution to what the story was. If I remember, and you can correct me, um, the, the game ends after you beat the, the robots that look like Axel. I don't even think you get them. In so stage five. In stage five, you have a... Uh, Actually, I don't remember when Robot Axel comes out. And again, we got our asses handed yeah, to us. We, we didn't make, we it, didn't make it. We made it to stage three and died. Like, all our continues were gone. But um, in stage five, you have this, like, Ronin samurai uh, I boss. That, and I remember after, I think, I, rem- I couldn't remember what the ending of this game was like. Because, again, as a kid, um, after stage five, there's nothing left. And then, of course, playing on normal when I was a kid. I don't even think I made it past stage five as a kid then. But uh, who knows? I know I made it to the end of this game. And on that was on the Wii oh, Virtual Console. Oh, wait, wait, wait. At the, ho- at the hotel, you have to disarm a bomb. Otherwise, yeah. that game ends there, too. If you don't disarm the bomb, everybody just dies and you get a game over. I do remember that, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we did make it further than this game on the Virtual Console. And I don't know if the Virtual Console changed the game to be easier or something. Oh, maybe like a normal kind Yeah, of maybe they, they took the Japanese version and just remade it for the Virtual Console and retranslated it or something. Because I know for a fact that this game on the Virtual Console was not as hard as the game we played the other I think we were, you know, even, you know, not even, you know, trying to be funny about this, but it was... I was like, oh, were we just like fatigued, you know, after playing two, um, you know, for a little while, and then we're playing three, just like, are, 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 are wow, I can't talk. Today. Yeah, no, we just got totally. You know what? Yeah, forget it. Forget, we, you we know just what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Those fat guys who breathe fire are like the hardest things in the world to beat. A, you can't pick them up. That's another thing. You can't pick them up in game one and game three, but you can pick them up in game two. Yeah. So it's like you're, you're expecting like you can grab these, these bastards and uh, throw them or back body break them, and you can't. You just fall on your ass. Um, but with the speed they move and the way they move, it's like almost impossible to get a hit on bubbles. Or how are they also? They how are they being like... 600 pounds faster than I am. Yeah, it's crazy. That makes no sense. But, again, the game is ridiculously wicked hard. Um, I'm not even interested. Like, you know, you could, I'm sure, um, the you know people with decent reflexes and game sense, like, you'll be able to time it fine and beat the game. I'm sure there are tons of people who have. I'm um, sure we played it enough. I'm not saying it will take us 
like five times of just playing it. It might take us like 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 times of I'm playing it. Nice. I'm just saying, with enough, if you're willing to put the work into it, you can get through the game. It's just going to be a lot of time and work and energy that on a game that's what, 20 years old, 30 yeah. years old at this point, not worth it. it I would only be inclined to, to put the effort in just to say I beat it because of how hard it is. I wouldn't do it for the storyline because I thought the storyline was awful. If you really, so bad. Well, if you're only going to do it for the storyline, you might as well just go to YouTube and watch it anyway. No, because I, oh, it's, not, it's not enjoyable to me at all. I'm just saying. If, it's, it's What is it, like a, a minute and a half video? Maybe, but that's what I'm saying. You can just go to YouTube. If the storyline's all you care about, just go to YouTube and watch it. If you want to see gameplay, you can watch us play it on YouTube. Yeah, which is, you know, it's not going to be that entertaining. But if we, we just needed a video to kind of go with the audio here. So uh, while well, we're working on things in the studio. Yeah. But, so if I had to rank these games, I'd go one, two, three. In order, the way they were released, that's the way I like them. Yeah, no, I would go uh, two, one, three. Two, one, three, definitely. Um, two also was the first Streets of Rage I played as a kid, so I think I had, you know, I didn't play one until a, a few years after I started playing two because we just didn't have it um, for the Genesis. Right. So now that we've ranked those, though that number could change. Those rankings could change with the upcoming Ra uh, Streets of Rage 4, uh, which was announced, I believe, at PAX West. And uh, there's no no console yet that has it said it's going to be released for and no release date. So we don't know what console it's going to be on it, it, or multiple consoles or PC. No idea. If you had a guess, yeah. what, would you, what, what console do you think it would come out? Or do you think it would be exclusive or multi-console? Honestly, with the graphics the way they look, I could see this coming out on the Switch, uh, which I think would be awesome. I would love to see it come out on the Switch. A, because then it's portable. You can take the Switch with you, break off the controllers, and play co-op right there with somebody anywhere. Um, I think that's kind of why they did it the way they did. I hope to see it on PS4 as a download and on Steam. I see this being a really good Steam game. Too. I do, too. I think... Uh, um, but I would really love to see it on the Switch. If I had to choose which one I would buy it on, I'd buy it for the Switch in a heartbeat. I would, too. I, I hope that it comes out for the Switch. But, um, you know, it might come out for other handheld. I think it's it's great in a handheld environment because if, if you need a controller. So I thought... Um, maybe it would come out for iPad because it seems like a lot of remakes of classics but are going that route. If it's co-op, how do you play with somebody on an oh, iPad? Oh, that's a really good fucking point. So I don't see it coming out on an iOS device. Um, I, I legit, because it's co-op, I see it being on a console more than anything else. Um, if there's remote play, I see it definitely being on uh, PC as well. Um, if there's no remote pay in it, play and it's only local co-op, I really, really, really hope it's exclusive to the Switch. I don't care if it comes out on anything else. So what do you think of the animation style? I um, I think uh, Scruff McGruff now, Axel now has <laughs> got a beard for some strange reason. Um, I like the animation style. I like the fact that it looks a lot like the old game. Like, you could definitely tell, like, oh, my God, that was Y signal from yeah. 2. Like, they kept the character design very similar so you could tell that they were. Well, that's something they did throughout the whole series yeah. with, with those things is that they kept those very, very similar. So, I mean, I did not see any gameplay of 4. I do know that there is gameplay available out there. Um, I have not really seen any, but I would hope that the music is just as iconic as, as the rest of the series. Um, and I hope the gameplay feels the same. As long as those things are there, I don't see this game doing... I, I, I see this game doing very well. I don't see it tanking, is what I was trying to say. If it's going to be... Um, if it's a full price, like, $50, $60 game yeah. on the Switch, it, it has a lot that it needs to do to, to be... Because, again, if you're beating this game in an hour, it's just not... Um, it's not a game that you would, you know, the, the the environment now for gaming is completely different than it was 20 years ago. So it's like, will, is a game that you can, ease, you know, pretty much beat in an hour, you know, stretch it to two hours if, if they're really, you know, doing something different here. Is that worth 50 or $60 to you? No, but I don't see them charging that price point. I see this being download only. I don't see it being cartridge based. So you're going to have to download from the Nintendo eShop. And same with PC. You're going to have to download it on Steam. That's why I, I'm leaning towards uh, PC and, and Nintendo for being this. I don't see it being a cartridge or CD-based game. I think it's going to be download only. Fair enough. And at that price point, I see it being anywhere from $15 to $30. 
And what would what would you I, rather? I mean, you I would definitely let her see for fifteen. My guess is they're gonna try to plug people for thirty, and then at some point it'll go on sale for like twenty. That's again uh, mm -hmm. just opinion based because I know people my age are not gonna pay sixty dollars for this game. No, not um, by far. Especially again, like you said, that the storyline is probably going to be at max two hours. So, um, I I honestly can't wait for it. When I when I heard that this was coming out, I, I got super excited. Um, I even announced it to people I work with, not knowing if they even ever played this game. I think so. uh, games like this, especially, um, get me really excited. Um, when you know, uh, I remember when I Am Setsuna came out for the Switch. And I was very excited to have like an old style uh, JRPG kind of come out just now, as opposed to, you know, like 15, 20 years ago, just because like that era of games is over. And to see some games kind of come back into the fold that play like that is, um, is really awesome. I mean, not to say that, you know, new games now aren't great. They are just in a completely different way. And, you know, if a brand new game that came out and they didn't, you know, say, oh, this for nostalgia or for this, or they're bringing something back, then it would seem like, why am I paying for a game, you know, like that when I could have a game like, say, you know, like Mass Effect or, you know, things that have just been completely updated. That's why I... Um I, 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 again, see this game being for download, but, uh, shit, lost my thought, sorry. <laughs> totally lost whatever I was just about um, to say based on what you were saying. Oh, the resurgence of games. Sorry, that's what it was about. Uh, I think in the next few years we are going to see a resurgence of the games that you and I grew up with. I think we're going to see um, a JRPG um, resurgence when the, the new Final Fantasy VII drops, if it ever drops. I see that becoming a big thing. Um, all the nostalgia fans will come out, and I think it'll pave a way for a, a new set of, of those type, those style of games. I hope, at least. As um, a as a working, I think professional, obviously, you know, just have a normal, you know, nine to fiver. Um, having games that are coming out also that you know is not going to take you over a hundred hours to complete is also kind of nice because I don't have. The 90 hours. I don't have 90 hours per game to spend and if I'm going to do that like I'm very picky on how I'm going to spend it like for example the last game I spent it on on that kind of time invested was, was Breath of the Wild and I absolutely feel like that time is completely worth invested but that game came out what two years ago yeah so it's 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 been that long I, I'm not really willing to give that much time to another game um, like that um, it might even just be a year old at this point when the Switch came out that um, well, whenever whenever it came out, it was a little, it, was, it wasn't a couple months ago, is my point. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, aside from I mean, Overwatch is probably the only other game I have that kind of time in there. But those matches are short. Like I don't have to play for very long, and I don't have to. If I step away from Overwatch for four or five months, I'm not going to forget how to play the game. I mean, I'm going to miss out on some you know cool events, and I'm I might you know be horrible at it for a little bit but i'm just not gonna you know you don't lose you don't lose what you already have yeah you know you don't kind of like shit what do i have to do now you yeah. know which you would get in some other games so that to me is like fine so like again games like shoots of rage coming out you know and i know like oh i could probably play this for you know a while you know because re replayability is gonna be you know pretty high on it because it's low investment on time yeah so if if other than this, if you had to pick another game from your childhood or from back then, to be co remade, co-op that could be remade or, or done, what would you choose? I can't pick another co-op game. Really? Okay. Because I really don't feel like there were that many. What, what I just mentioned uh, uh, one that the only other co-op game that came to my brain, which was the Power Rangers. Cause I didn't actually. What was it? Golden Axe. Yeah, Golden Axe. That was, was co-op. I never played it. Uh, it was. It was hard. It was good. It was hard. Um, I would either like to see another Ninja Turtles game done right, not with the new Ninja Turtles in the way they look, but like an old school looking 90s style Ninja Turtle game um, redone or, or brand new. Um, Contra, I know they, they redid something recently about that. I didn't think it was that great. Or maybe even um, Double Dragon would be another good one. Um, I don't know if they even made that recently either. If they did, I don't know. Double Dragon was that Bimmy and Jimmy? That was that Double Dragon Three. Was Bimmy <laughs> and Jimmy. They got really lazy on the writing and the editor. Shout out really to checked. Angry Video Game Nerd. That yeah. was an awesome episode. 
Uh, you got anything else you want to add? I don't think so. And again, as far as like another like childhood or even, I'm only thinking Sega at this point that I would love to see remade. And they've remade so many uh, that I really can't even think of one that I would just love to see rebooted or remade because the, my most beloved franchises, they're already, they come out with newer iterations all the time. Zelda, Final Fantasy. Um, yeah, they're still on. So I can't, you know what? I, I can't even, I don't even know. I don't even know. I'll do it for us. I think, yeah, I think that's a pretty that's much. A wrap. Oh, oh, yeah. Don't forget, um, follow us on Facebook at, fa- at Nerdcaster, on Twitter at Nerd underscore Caster, on Instagram at Nerdcaster. Um, visit our website for articles and, and uh, podcasts is definitely there as well at www.nerdcaster.com. Doing new things with the website, so please check it out. Um, Drop us a line, um, send us an email at hello at nerdcaster.com. Um, you know, if you feel like sending us a message, you have any comments that you, um, you know, feel like you, you want to, you want us to cover something else. Um, you can also, this will, this episode will also be on YouTube. So please feel, free, please feel free to subscribe there. Drop us a comment. We are planning on providing more video content in the future. So definitely worth subscribing just to, you know, kind of get updates there as well. Yep, and like always, uh, subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever else you can find us on the interweb. It, it, and if you can, leave us a five-star review. It really helps. Did I miss anything else? Uh, you shouldn't tell people to leave a five-star review. You should only tell people to leave a review and just really, really hope that it's super positive, which I hope it is because you don't want to lead reviews because that could potentially lead them to taking down all the reviews on the site. I don't. Uh, I get, I have no idea what you mean. What? If you're gonna review us on any platform, please feel free to leave the review that you feel like we deserve, and I really hope that it's five stars. But if it's not, then you know what? Please let us know why. And you know what? We're always looking to improve. So there you go. Any feedback, all feedback is completely welcome. Thank you for listening. Yep. Nerdcaster out. Oh.